So welcome back from the break. It's still entertainment review on Metro Television. I'm Desifading the Star. We're here with Helen K. Koka. Now it's time for me to introduce our guest. So uh, this gentleman I've met a couple of times, and he is the business manager for Silverbed uh, Cinemas, and uh, I'll be introducing him in a bit, and also another producer that we have here. He is Nana Yautumberi Yabua, business manager for Silverbed Cinemas, and also Joseph Clef Abua is a producer and director, movie producer and director. Gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you. I know you're enjoying afternoon. the BB Niger discussion, you know. Okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's time for us to talk movies. I'm interested in the money. <laughs> <laughs> Are you people interested in money? You can't have that. <laughs> I'm interested in the money. <laughs> but anyways, let's begin with the movie industry. Um, you are a business person for uh, an agency or let me say an avenue that gets to the people. How long has it been since Silver Best Invest has been around? Okay, so this November, Silverbed in Ghana will be mm -hmm. 13 years old. In Ghana would be 13 years. If you compare, if you'd compare 13 years back and now, mm -hmm. what would be your assessment of our movie industry and in relation to the cinemas? Okay, so 10, 15 years ago, we were just seeing movies on VCDs and DVDs. And we didn't even have a lot of movies in the cinemas. And Silverbed came into the scene. Well, before Silverbed, there had been other cinemas in the system, but they couldn't survive. Um, Silverbed has managed to hold the fort for 13 years and given a lot of opportunities to producers, directors to showcase their movie to patrons and, and Ghanaians at large. And so it's been a lot of progress 13 years ago and now, and we're hoping to even get it bigger so people can get to see a lot of movies aside being in Accra alone. Interesting. Do, do Ghanaians patronize cinemas? Okay, so the movie culture is growing. Um, it's growing. There are times we have to shut down the cinema from customers because we are sold out. Okay. Even with your money, we can't let you in. We are totally sold out. Um, so it's picking up, but I think we need a lot more cinemas so we can accommodate. How many cinemas do you have now? In um, so just the, Accra Mall? Okay, so we have five rooms, five theaters. What are we the can capacities? 1,200 persons at a go. So each room. Okay. So five cinema hall with a capacity of 300 each. Okay. All right. So cumulatively, you can sit 1,200 pe uh, people. And yeah. What is the frequency? What times do you show? And I'm asking that to understand also our culture of going to movies, the right. time range. So what's your frequency in terms of availability? If I want okay, to come So we show movies work. every day, really. Um, yes. Business starts at 10 a.m. We okay. close somewhere after midnight every day. For 13 years, we have never shut down every what single is, day. What is your, in terms of variation, mm. your peak time, your prime time, and your premium? Can, okay. you, can you give me that? So, obviously, we have a lot of students as our patrons. 60% of our patrons are students. 30% um, okay. corporate persons, and 10% families and aged people. Yeah. Uh, so, by this modalities, you realize during the weekdays and during the day proper, between 10 and 6 p.m., the cinemas are not that busy. But after 6 p.m., that's where people have closed from work. People want to spend time with their families, their loved ones. So the peak period, it's 7 p.m. to late. But the weekends really, really get busy. That's where the premiums are. Mm. are Almost Do you have the same yeah. rates, be it your premium, mm. um, prime time, and peak time is the same rate. Okay, so movie is a product. Yeah. And like any other product, you price it uh, per the demand of, of it. Yeah. So we have movies that sell higher than other movies. So for instance, we are showing Woman King, which premiered last week. Uh, it's a different price from movies that has been in the cinema for say two weeks or beyond. Okay. Yeah, so it's various prices for various movies. At what point does the price depreciate or does the price go up? All right, so these movies we show, we get them from the studios through distributors, okay. right? We sign contracts for these movies. One contract might tell you for two weeks, you cannot discount your ticket at all. Beyond the two weeks, that's where you drop the prices. At that contract- Let's, we, let's hold on there. I'm interested in that part. So right. as a producer, mm. he is done with the movie. What does he need to do to get the movie to you? To the cinema. And then is it based on your requirements or his requirements? The business is mine. So he works with my rules. He works with your rules. Yes. All right. 
But then you were talking about, you know, you've stayed in business for 13 years now, yes. and then others have come, but then they were not able to sustain, you know, or they were not able to stand the test of time. What is that secret? What has kept you in business for this 13 good years? Um, dedication, hard work, determination, and the, the zeal to, to make the Ghana movie industry thrive. Because if Silver Bird go under right now, there's practically no cinema in Ghana again. Then these guys are going to start from point zero again or start showing movies in hotels, auditoriums, which they cannot afford anyway, national mm -hmm. theater, which they can't afford anyway. And so we want to be there for the movie producers. Because mind you, COVID came and we're shut down for 16 months. Most business would go under after 16 months, but we managed to still come out of the deep and we are back in operation. Uh, we, are, we are still afloat. Okay. Let's bring Joseph in. As a producer, if you're putting a movie together, what is the plan? Of course, you do the casting, you do the other things. What about after production, after you're done with the whole thing? What's the plan for it on a usual? So um, basically, before I start production, I think to the story I'm going to present because it's business. Okay. Now, first, we used to do for fun. But now it's business. Hey, you sure? You do? Yes, you, you now don't. Now don't do it for fun again. No, 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 no. Because you have Adiachi to. Adiachi. Yes, Adiachi. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think about your audience. Because if you produce anything and you put out the cinemas, even Silver Bed will even block it before you even get there. You okay. even get patronage. So you look at the story you want to produce and all that. For me personal, when I'm doing productions, before I go to the story and everything, I go to Silver Bed. Because that is my first. If I'm not doing film festival, that's mm -hmm. my first avenue of distribution. So I go to um, Nana is here. Okay, I go so to you've him. met him a couple yes, of times. Yes, I always go to his office. I say, okay. Nana, Charlie, I'm coming to do this movie. What do you think? What's the advice? I take mm. advice from him before I now go and then do whatever I need to do. So it's very important. I, I consider the audience and I have to talk to my main this is my first avenue of distribution before I enter into production. So let's let's bring Nana back. So Nana, walk me through you acquiring his products. Okay. And there are two ways. No, there are two markets. The local market and the international market. Walk me through how you acquire it, how you sustain it, and how you turn it around. Okay. <clears throat> so I would say this before answering your question. Um, every single month, I reject close to 10 movies you presented at You're a proud man. No. Every single month, um, you reject 10, yes, 10 or more Ghanaian Ghanian content, and it will lead me to answering your question. Um, so what we require from a producer like himself is a preview copy of the movie. Now, unfortunately, Ghana doesn't even have any distribution arm anywhere. So these guys are the producers. Same person is the director. He's distributing his own movie. He's marketing this same movie. I don't think one person has that specialty, specialty to do all those things. But unfortunately, the avenues are not available. So we act as a distributor for these guys. We request a preview copy, full movie, before it even hits the cinema. We go through the movie, check the standard of it, the cinematography, the, uh, the content, the quality of pictures, storyline proper, if it meets the silver bed standard, and we have a silver bed standard. Once it meets those standards, I share an MOU with him. He goes through. If he's okay, we sign a contract. We agree on a date, and then we showcase the movie. Mm. What's the worst movie that has come to you that you have, I'm not saying mention the name, I'm not going to mention <laughs> but, but the, the, the content of it that you said, no way I'm going to show this at my cinema? Okay, boss, um, there are certain movies you, they put on your desk and you don't even know the vim the producer had to even bring that movie to you. Have you ever yeah. thought about where they are coming from? Right. I'll give you a clarity. Somebody shooting a movie in Kumase looks at the response he has on the road, response he has meeting people, funerals, response in, as in how comic conversations have gone. So in that person's mind, when I put this together and I come to the cinema, I am going to collectively 
bring these numbers to the cinema to have fun. Unfortunately, because there is a standard and he's not speaking the same language, you might reject that movie. That, that's what I wanted him to explain, you know, give us an example why, then we'll go through. Because, I mean, even with the Kumasi example, yes. well, I'm sure there's quality. There's one that will be from Kumasi that you definitely would show at your cinema. Okay. So just take us through So through I'll that. take you down mm -hmm. memory lane. Uh, you remember I mentioned VCD earlier on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where you could find these movies 10 years ago. Um, when I joined Silverbed, we're showing movies manually with manual projectors. Okay? Now we have migrated from a manual projector to a digital projector. Now I'm even going laser projector. Guess what? You can't bring a movie on a pen drive or a VCD and show it as Silverbed. I don't even have the machine or equipment to show that movie. So then what do I do? Okay. So the conversation will be... Will. Now what we request from somebody like him is a DCP, a digital cinema package. That's a format these movies come in. It's do the people in our market know this name? Um, those who come to Silverbed are getting to know it. So then, first hand, just as Des said, you, you, you're lost already if you don't have an engagement with you. The thing is, even conversion of these movies and the format we need them at Silverbed is problematic to the local distributor, to the local producer. They don't even know how to convert from an MP4, an AVI, to a DCP. They don't know how. Software is expensive. If you have someone who will do it for you, he's going to charge you big money. So, first place. But unfortunately, if this movie is not in this format, the projectors I use cannot showcase this movie. So even with a good content, if I don't get to in a DCP format, your movie is dead on arrival. You need to find a way. And if it's not in the cinema, where else are you selling this movie? Mm -hmm. Because mind you, VCDs are not selling again. So you would end up selling it to some online portal or Iroko or Chicken Change. For a movie you spend close to, he knows how much they spend on, on movies. <laughs> they don't have big budgets anyway. Mm. But for a Ghanaian producer to spend 100,000 CDs on a movie, and get nothing. See, I still have checks sitting in my office, six years old, seven years old. These people cannot come for the checks. It's so meager. Bank charges alone would even take all those monies out, out of their account because they are making next to nothing when they bring these movies to the cinema. Unfortunately, they put all the efforts in production. They forget there's a post-production process they need to also think through. That's the marketing, mm -hmm. publicity, making sure these movies in the face of everyone they intend to see. Now you are talking about meeting someone at a funeral or market, and they like the concept you have. You make it into a movie. These guys are not coming to the cinema. They are only going to laugh about it or gossip about it in the same place, the market, the funerals. You need footfall in the cinema. See your movie before you realize some revenue. You get it. So after production, they have nothing to, to, to publicize these movies, to market these movies. And they are relying on cast to put it up on their pages. Mm -hmm. They are relying on mm -hmm. bloggers uh, to post it for Do free. That, yeah. And that's somebody else's business. Okay? So internationally, they, they allocate 30% of the production costs for marketing alone. 30% of that budget. Only for marketing. I've had Producers have premieres in Ghana at Silverbed, and they don't even have money to print a backdrop for their red carpet. Mm. So that's to say that they have probably invested all the money already all the money in, in production, the production and everything. And they can't what? even afford a red carpet. It means <laughs> my, they can't even afford the red carpet. Yeah. Do, do movie producers have a structure in production? When I say a structure in production, he, he mentioned parts. Yes. After casting, you even need to ask yourself whether the person you have casted is marketable. You need to ask yourself how strong is the person's social influence. You need to ask yourself what station are you even going to partner? Do you do all those things to know that per what I've done, this is my projection, this is how much I'm going to make. So even going to sit with him, I know this is the offer. 
Yeah. But from where he's saying, what he's saying, you go and ask him to make an offer. Yeah, so Poka, to answer your question, me per se, um, I do a lot of research before I even start production. And I have um, co-producers who ask me, oh, Joseph, how did you do it? And you tell them how you do it. Then they'll go and do otherwise. So it's like most of some of our producers are not really learning, put a lot of things into consideration. Mostly some of my, some of my friends who do production, they'll go like, Joseph, you've done your stuff at Silverbed, so can they lead me to Silverbed? Then I'll ask, okay, prepare the preview copy. They will take it, they'll go like, ah, Joseph, long time, I've not heard from them, what is going on? So they, they don't learn. That's, that's the bottom line. Do you, do you do training for people to understand the nitty gritties okay. of working with you? Um, so six, seven years ago, we realized this flaw in the movie industry space because they were just producing movies. They didn't even know how to market these movies. So So Robert is an exhibitor. Our job is just to take movies, show them, and probably split money with the producer as the, con the contract states. But we realized these guys don't even know what they're about when it comes to marketing the movie. So we took it upon ourselves as a cinema to organize symposiums for these producers to come learn. Because Silverbed has a mother company in Nigeria. Nigeria has a distribution arm, that's Silverbed Film Distribution. So we understand the concept of distribution Distribution comes with marketing, it comes with publicity, it comes with even engaging your cast, your crew to market these movies. They don't even sign contracts with, with cast to promote the movies after they are done. Okay? When we extended this invitation, Coca, guess who showed up? The people who already know what to do. Shelley showed up, Abu mm. Salam showed up, uh, Kofa showed up, Peter. These guys are already doing great in the cinema. Anyways, the app coming producers were nowhere to be found. People sit in my office and tell me I haven't been to a film school, so I can't even advise them on how to sell their movie. Oh. But 10 years and 13 <laughs> years is enough, I think in my opinion, to have a stake on what a good movie is when I see one and how to market it. Because it hurts me when Hollywood movies come in, they are, they are gate crushing my cinema. They are breaking doors, they are breaking staircases because I can't hold that capacity. A week after this premiere, there's a local premiere and I have 20 people sitting in my the cinema. Numbers drop. And I'm asking, is this also not a movie? Why can't we pull this same crowd to the local content as we pull to the Hollywood content? Um, the second year, we did the same symposium again and the same people showed up. So then we realized we were we're just chasing no, our own tail. You just don't have to do it anymore. And um, unfortunately, there were no regula regulatory body mm -hmm. for the movie industry even. We only got one two years ago, boss. Ghana uh -huh. did not have anybody, any institution, any that authority in the country. that regulates the content they produce. Do you get the same patronage in Wager as in the Wessel Small? as you get in Akram. Okay, Akram, Akram is a choice location. It's, it's a no-brainer. That, that space, it's magical. You know, West Hills has its own crowd that we pull, but it's not as much as Akram. Or, but West is Hills it because still, of the price and the location? Uh, no, West Hills is even cheaper than Akram, or, to be fair. You know, we want to pull a lot of people to West Hills by reducing ticket prices, by running a lot of promos and, and activations. But even with that, People would rather come and spend more at Accra Mall than drive all the way. That's, they call it the Kaswa traffic. <laughs> oh, so exactly. they want to avoid the Kaswa traffic. want to avoid the traffic. And today that it has rained, for instance, you know how that road is. Yeah. Yes. So because of the road and yes. all those things. Plus, but then, okay. you know, yes, um, your points early on actually uh, made it clear with what Joseph was saying that, you know, um, the upcoming producers or a lot of them wouldn't want to learn. They are unwilling to learn and all of that. But then I wanted to find out from you that apart from Silver Bear that, you know, you send your music, uh, your movies to, to premiere and, you know, sell. Apart from that, how do you also make money out of the movies you make? Yes. Um, Poker said something earlier on. For me, before I even start production. I will have my distribution line where I want to go. 
So I like, first, after I finish, I do my first cut and then pa film festivals. So sometimes when I get the selection for the film festivals, I add it to my marketing tool for people to know, okay, this movie has got selection on this international festival. I want to see it. So I add that to it. So after that, um, if I'm allowed to mention some names, like um, I have Aquaba Magic, um, DSTV. I also have um, Akis, which is an um, online platform in um, Canada. And then recently we have Homey. So I only put all those platforms to it before even I get to the cinemas. I use my numbers and everything that my promotion, everything puts together as a media kit and I propose it to them. So before I even thinking of doing a production, I have where I want to distribute okay. my film. Okay. So I do that. Which, which movie would you say has been your highest or your, the, the movie that has got you the, so much money? Um, I'll say Till Sunset. Was till my, Sunset. Yes, Till when Sunset. Did you shoot wow. that Season one, yes. Okay. Well, I didn't know it was you. Right? <laughs> because it was one of the movies I boldly went to the mall saying that this is what I wanted to watch. Oh, thank you. Okay, so how much did you budget? I want us to do a breakdown so we can understand <laughs> yeah. the expenses and what you make in return. How much do you spend on that movie? Um, to be fair, uh, I think till sunset, with the marketing and everything put together, I think we did um, 20,000. 20,000? Yes, this was actually a web series. Okay. okay. Yes, it was actually a web series. So after that, we put all together. It was 10 minutes per episode. So after that, we put all together and we had a film. Okay. Out of it. And, and how did you meet their standard? Yes. So as Nana said, for me, before I even started, I think 2016, I did Game Over. That was my first TV series and it was shown on TV3. So after that, after, I didn't like the deal that I went through. So I decided to sit back and learn. So mm -hmm. I started doing more of distribution. So I was doing workshops and everything. So I understand the quality of the cameras you have to use for your production. And I knew Silver Bed is not just using a projector or just projecting it on the wall. So any production that I do, I make sure I'm getting a camera that should at least 4K. And I shoot it raw 4K so that at least after we get to the bench and we work on it, mm -hmm. I can still have the quality. The quality so that is how I was able to get to um, so now, Silver So Bay. now walk us through how, how you were able to make the return. Yes. So um, right after we finished the production, even on set, I started my marketing even right on set. Okay. With the BTS, we start making noise about the social media everywhere. Then after we finished, I got bloggers. I paid. Okay. I spoke mm. to people. I started booking interviews. So Silver Bed, when you have um, a collab with them, you have media houses you can go for interviews. Mm -hmm. So I prepped my cast, and everybody was so excited about it. So we did, I even did billboards at Silver Bed, okay. the, uh, um, Accra Mall, the Accra Mall area. Prime area. So I did all those things into marketing. I put all those into marketing. And trust me, it was the first um, web series to be shown at Silver Bed ran for a week. And the attendance was really, really great. So since then... How much money? Uh, the money... Yeah, what do you just... The thing is that, the thing is that, we are, what, we are trying to see if it was profitable. Right. Yes. Okay, well, if it you don't was. want to mention that, it was, it, um, was it profitable? It was, it was, be, because yeah, right after, watching. it was, <laughs> because right after Silver Bed, it didn't end day. Mm. I did international VOD platforms. Okay. And then finally, the film part was on um, Aquaba Magic okay. and then Show Max. So, yes. Have you so, recommended okay. a local movie to your mother company to show? Okay, so um, what personally I do for Ghanaian producers, before they go on set, I advise them to come see, not me, to come, come to Silverbed. Let's have a conversation. Let, let's have a dialogue. Because there are certain content I know that would sell. Others would be a beautiful production. Mind you, um, not every movie we reject is a bad movie. We have very quality movies, but they are not cinema movies. Okay. They are, What's a cinema movie? Okay. So cinema movies are commercial movies. Movies that that would want someone to come back more than once. It's the return visit that makes the money. So you see big numbers on the premiere night for local movies. Uh, I sold five halls. I sold seven halls. 
you see it in the newspapers the following day. And that would be a Friday night or a Saturday night. Sunday night, I have two people sitting in that hall because word of mouth is not selling that movie. Okay. They have cashed in one night. People are not too impressed with what they saw. But guess what? There are movies I've had people come six times with six different people to watch that same movie over and over and over again. That's how you make your movie. So if that movie is not commercial enough, then I don't consider it a cinema-worthy movie. You can enjoy it at the comfort of your homes, have a good laugh, have a good viewing, but then it just ends there. Okay. It needs to be commercial enough so people would want to come see it again or would tell other people to come. Okay, so are uh, you still uh, joining us here on Entertainment Review, having a discussion about um, our movie industry and in connection to cinemas. We're taking a break. When we come back, you hear more from Joseph and Nanaya. I know Nanaya has issues with producers. He's told me before about the fact that they only focus on the premiering and that is it. We'll talk about that after the break. Welcome back from the break. We'll continue with our discussion on uh, our movie industry and the cinemas. And uh, I want to talk to Nanayao and hear from him. As a private entity, how are they surviving? Because this is a creative art space that we have, you know, um, an umbrella, a ministry. There's an umbrella there. There's a creative arts council, all of those things. And it seems like it's been left for private individuals. It's not just a crowd. I mean, I traveled a couple, of, a couple of weeks back across the country, and it's like our focus is only on Accra with everything. Nanaya. Yes, boss. What is happening? Hmm? Um, it's quite How unfortunate. Surviving? Um, to be fair, the cinema business is a very expensive business. Uh, one projector is close to $60,000. I have 10 of what? those. $60,000? $60, yes. One. Uh, I have 10 of those. That's $600,000. Yes. Um, it's not just the purchase of it. You need to maintain it. You need to upgrade it. You need to keep buying um, lumps. It's, it's quite expensive. But it's, it's also unfortunate that the business have been left to private entities. I was hoping we would get a cinema, one cinema in each regional capital. That way, this man is not only showing his movie at Accra Mall and West Coast Mall and possibly... Uh, Golden Eagle Cinema in Kumase, but everybody else around the country would get to. So if you get 10 people in Tamale, 20 people in Cape Coast, 100 people in Takrade, 1,000 people in Accra, that is money he's making. But once that movie is produced, he brings it to a silver bed. If producers don't have the kind of contacts, like he mentioned, the VODs and the online platforms that he has. That means the movie is dead and after right, it yeah. leaves Silverbed. And that's it. If you don't make that much money at Silverbed, of course, I don't even know how they make their next movies because they don't make enough in the cinema. Let me bring this governmental yeah. aspect. So we have the NFE. Right. Um, I've known it as a white elephant for a very long time. Um, we know of the GTA. You pay taxes. We do. Yes. Have, how beneficial has that money that they collect been to your outfit? Because I know when you get expansion, it reduces a lot of burden and also it gives you a better return because that's how you make your money. Yes. How has that revenue um, collection in the GTA supported your growth? Okay, so before, before now, two years ago, GTA was regulating the cinema space. And then when the NFA was created, they took over the mantle, so yeah. to speak. So now National Film Authority is the governing body overseeing all the creative arts and movie space. Um, and they've, they are just two years old. They are just babies. They are trying to understand how the industry works. They have been trying to bring all these players together now. Now the most unfortunate thing about the movie industry, in my personal opinion, is the fact that producers are unwilling to work together. Explain further. Yes. <laughs> so everybody wants to be the, the star boy or the star girl of the night. Um, they are not doing collaborations. It took, it took some work for Silverbear to convince 
Kofi Asamoa and Peter to do a production together. That was a silver bed initi initiative. As much as they are learned in yes. that space. Yeah, because he was doing good all by himself. He thinks he's also doing good all by himself. He doesn't need the next person. But even in Hollywood, before the movie starts, you see Paramount, you see uh, Warner, Warner Brothers, you see Disney on one production. One. And these are big houses, these big production houses. But this man with 20,000 CDs wants to do a, go alone and do a movie by himself. Now, if somebody else brings 5,000, 10,000, you realize they would come up with a, a reasonable budget to do a good movie. Now, this production, it costs money. Renting these cameras you mentioned is, is no, it's no beans. It's, it's expensive. They pay as much as 5,000 CDs a day sometimes. Production costs have not come. Uh, location, uh, cost, it costs them money. But their budget is so limited, they can't meet up the international standards because you can only do so much with, with a certain kind of money. Right? So NFA is finding their feet. Uh, after two years, they are, they are doing well because some symposiums have been had. Um, we've had two so far. There's a meta uh, cinema meta. coming up very soon in November. Um, we had when you the, say meta, the meta as in no Facebook or what? Okay, so that's a new space in the, in the movie industry internationally. So that's where NFA is trying to get the Ghanaian industry in the international space. So they just launched a campaign in Made in Ghana, Made in Ghana campaign or show, Shoot in Ghana campaign, sorry. I think that's the tag mm -hmm. to yeah. invite investors into Ghana. But how do you invite investors when you haven't cleaned your house? When you don't have people working together? When the industry is so porous, everybody is doing what doing they want. Anything. They don't even have a working association. Interesting. So, We've got a few minutes to wrap up. Helen can come in and then I'll, I'll get but to But this you conversation, right. we'll be glad if you could make yourself available for next week Wednesday so that you continue this conversation. I'll be here as long as That'll you want fine, me to but say. <laughs> yeah. From what he's saying, you know, I'd wanted to uh, find out from Joseph that, you know, um, are you willing, personally, to even um, collaborate with other producers to do a movie, or have you tried that before? Yes, I have. Um, for me, I open up. But you see, uh, as Nana said, with the Hollywood that you see different production houses, every production house has what they are bringing on board. Right. But here, in our case, now everybody wants to, I want to direct. But for me, before I allow you to direct, I have to know your strength, what you've done. And they don't really understand that. Oh, me, when they are bringing this to me, I want to die. So that's why it's not making the collaboration really mm. works for us. Okay. Everybody wants to be the, 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 be the boss. Be, 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 be the one. Before we wrap up, tell us what's showing at the cinemas this okay, today. So, and this. Um, we just had Woman King, a fantastic premiere last week. If you come to Silverbird now, the whole space looks like a village. That's the setup. Very beautiful. And um, we have new movies coming up. Shazam is coming. Um, Black Panther is coming. Black Adam is coming. Avatar is coming. Boots and Boots. These are the line, big titles lined up before the end of the year. Visit silverbedcinemas.com slash Accra or slash West Coast Mall. And then you get the shadows. In it. Okay, so now that you mentioned international, local, local, local movies upcoming. Look how movies are coming. Well, I have a lot on my table I'm considering. Okay. So what happens when they bring this movie? Because he did mention some producers complain. They don't hear from us early enough. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a backlog of previews we need to go through, make sure they meet those standards before we can even give, up, give out those dates. Okay? Yeah. So I can't confirm any title till the review board has gone through them. Wow. And dates are given. And give it out. Yeah. Ah, we've got to wrap up. Um, so top three movies that has sold down Silver Bear Cinemas. Mm. Ghanaian movies. Ghanaian movies. Uh, Calibos in China. Um, Aloe Vera. Are you uh, saying the things we see on social media that sold out, <laughs> sold out, is a fluke? Uh, okay, so when they sell one... We have 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> when, when, when they sell one hole, they, they consider it as sold out. Sold out. Yehoah. Yeah. <laughs> It's so sold out as it is. <laughs> okay, so Aloe Vera, Calibos in China, the last one. Um, Shelley's movie. 
50-50. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Anayao. And Joseph, uh, very last words, you know, so that we wrap it up. Yeah, so uh, I'm just working on a new project um, mm. called The Chicks. Um, considering bringing... As in the humans or the... the um, okay, so um, The Chicks, um, from informal way to address a lady. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, that's what we're so it's, coming, from it's, com it's coming out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph uh, well, for coming. And also, he's a producer and director. And Nanayao, uh, to Berema Yabua. He's a business manager for Silver Bears Cinemas. Someone will say, Azunto Ghost, please. So that's it for the show today. Many thanks for watching. I'm Desmond Krekudanso. I'm Helena Nyewejain.